In today's video, we're going to be discussing the question, what is impulse? Now, in order to answer that, we need to start off with one of the most important equations in the whole of physics, and that is Newton's second law. This states that the net force acting on an object is equal to the product of the mass and the acceleration. We can write this a slightly different way. So we can just say that F is equal to M multiplied by change in velocity over change in time. This is simply because acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Now, if we look at this carefully, though, we notice that mass times the change in velocity is actually the change in momentum. So yet another way of writing Newton's second law is that the net force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change of time. Whenever something is divided by the change in time, this is known as the rate of change. So in this case, net force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to move this delta t over here on the other side of the equation. What I get is that the net force multiplied by the time is equal to the change momentum. This quantity on the left hand side over here is actually impulse. The, it is defined as the product of the average net force multiplied by the time. And we can even write this down. So it's average net force multiplied by the time. So and we can just move this definition over here. And this is actually quite critical. Why am I saying average? Well, actually, in some collisions, the force tends to vary. For example, if you have a collision between a between two cars, the force might peak really quickly, but it's not going to go from zero to, I don't know, let's say a thousand newtons instantly, and it's going to go through some values in between. So it may not be constant, it may change over time. So that's why it's important to know that this is the average net force. Okay, well, so impulse is once again defined as average net force multiplied by the time at which the force is actually acting. Notice that this is actually quite a handy one, quite a handy equation. The reason is because it doesn't just take into account the force which it acts, but also the time at which it's acting for. So let's say that we've got a block and let's say that that block is one kilogram. If I have a force of shall we say 10 newtons acting on it, if that force only acts for, let's say a nanosecond, 10 to the power of minus nine seconds, so one nanosecond, this block is hardly going to move. However, if I have my delta T to be, I don't know, let's say 70 seconds, then the block will definitely move a considerable distance. So we can see that the higher the impulse, well, the higher the change in momentum. So it's not just the magnitude of the force that matters, but now also the time at which it acts. Perfect. Well, what are the units of impulse? Well, impulse is force multiplied by time. So it's going to have units of newtons times seconds. Remember a newton, uh, because F is equal to ma, is kilograms ms to the power of minus two 
multiply by seconds. So the base unit of the impulse is a kilogram ms to the power of minus one. This is the base unit. If you're confused about base units, I'm going to put a link to our video on base units from a couple of days ago. But in general, in, um, in most questions, we're going to be using the unit Newton seconds for impulse. Now, what we're going to look at next is graphs. This is a really important part of specification. It often comes up in exam questions. So let's write down over here, graphs. If I have a graph of, let's say, the force given in Newtons and time on the x-axis, let's keep things simple, give that in seconds, the impulse will actually be the area underneath that graph. And why is that? Well, because this quantity, impulse, is the magnitude of the force. So some value f multiplied by the time at which it acts, which is some change in this value delta t so in this case your impulse is going to be the area so the impulse is the area underneath the graph this of course only it's only true for a force against time graph now they will try to trick you quite often in questions by giving you a non-standard unit. So one of the things we really need to watch out for in exam questions is the um, is the units. For example, this could be given in millinewtons or the time could be given in nanoseconds, etc, etc. Uh, let me just show you a really simple example. So let's say that I have a graph of the force in um, in newtons over here and let's say that i am given time on the x-axis in milliseconds and let's say that the we have a constant force which is 50 50 newtons and let's say that it acts over two milliseconds so this over here is two milliseconds over here. Well, how can we figure out the impulse? The impulse is just going to be the area underneath the graph. So in this case, our impulse is simply 50 multiplied by two times 10 to the power of minus three. Notice that the 10 to the power of minus three comes from the fact that I have milliseconds on the x-axis. And if we put that into a calculator, we're going to get a impulse of 0.1 Newton seconds. Perfect. We only have one more case to consider. And um, this is a slightly non standard question and in fact I'm just going to um, move the background to a graph paper uh, style background uh, just to show you how we would be able to find a uh, pretty specific uh, type of a question so let's say that I have a graph like so, of force against time once again. But let's say that the force is not constant. So let's say we have a force which does, which does something like that. So it could be a form of a Gaussian curve, for example. Um, if we get something similar at, a, at an exam question. The only way to tackle this during A-level physics and the way we should tackle this um, in, in exams is, um, is, is using, is counting up 
the squares. So the only way we can find the area is to find the area to find the area of an of, a, of an individual little square. And once we have that, we need to count up how many of them are are in there. Now this could be a little bit tedious. In this example, the squares are quite small. They're probably not going to be quite so small in the in the real exam, but it's something to keep in mind. So counting the squares. Um, will normally work. If the graph looks like a standard shape, for example, it could be circular and all the one, the one which I've drawn is not circular, but this could also be, if it's approximated well by a geometric shape, it should be um, fairly obvious what formula we're going to use for the area. Finally, for those of you guys, uh, who really enjoy maths and also do A-level maths, uh, you probably know that there's a more general formula which um, you will study at university level uh, if you do physics or engineering. And this is that impulse is actually equal to the integral of the force with respect to time. And as we know, integrals are an ex extraordinarily handy way of figuring out the areas underneath a curve. So this is our final option. But this equation here is uh, not required for OCR Physics A because this is a non-calculus based exam. Okay guys, so this is all for me for now for on the topic of impulse. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If there are any questions feel free to leave a comment down below.